Hey you all, welcome back to the Morning Glory Sessions. We're so happy to have you all with us again. If you haven't been here before, this is the series where my dad, Dr. J, preaches to me all the way to work and we figured that we would share some of these awesome moments with you all. So without any further ado, my dad, Dr. J. Hallelujah. It's important that each of us gets a good relationship with the Holy Spirit. So the Bible calls it Christ in you. It says the Holy Spirit lives in you. We know that when the Holy Spirit moves in you, there's certain gifts and graces come forth. But part of growing and maturing as a Christian is getting this relationship with the Holy Spirit where you really know Him. I mean, He knows you already. So he's not getting to know you. You're getting to know him. So when you begin to understand the Holy Spirit, let me just throw in a freebie. There's nowhere in the Bible that the Holy Spirit is called a he. That never happened. Mm. The Spirit itself, Romans 8, 16, I believe, Romans 8, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. Uh, it's technon, the Greek word. It's neuter and gender. Correctly translated, the Spirit itself. So there's nowhere in the Bible that calls the Holy Spirit a he, and it's neither a he nor a she, because in reality, God is both he and she. Hallelujah. Both are in there. So how could the female have been taken out of Adam to make a, uh, you know, a woman a wife if it wasn't both male and female in Adam. Mm. So our completeness in him is we need to be comfortable with our female emotions and our male dominant work ethic type things that are going on. But learning to be comfortable with the Holy Spirit is very important because all your blessings are going to come when the anointing of the Holy Spirit is moving. And so one of our biggest goals as believers is to stir up the gifts, stir up the anointing, get some anointing flowing. Sometimes we jump the gun, we're too quick. We want an instant thing and it takes the Holy Spirit and our emotions and mind a few seconds to engage properly. And one of the things we discover about the Holy Spirit is it moves in waves. Like you could be standing somewhere and prophesying and all of a sudden, wham, it just like hits you. A wave of power goes through you and you're like, whoa. And it's shocking, but it's ple it's pleasant. It's pleasing. Although it's a wonderful thing. Sometimes I call it the waves of glory. And Charles Haddon Spurgeon, uh, late 1800s, pastor in London, England, often considered to be the greatest preacher who ever lived. He preached to thousands of people, never needed a microphone. I mean, he must have had some kind of voice. Oh, and uh, they say that when he would really get going, you could see the anointing like, you know, if you're out on a windy day and you see a field of wheat, you can see waves of wind just going in waves across the wheat. And they say when he would get preaching good, you could see waves of anointing just flowing across the people. And I thought, wow, I was thinking one day, well, I'd never seen that. Uh, maybe perhaps I never looked for it. But I was at a uh, John Wimber spiritual warfare conference back in, I don't know what, 1986, maybe. Up in, 18, up in I LA. Like, uh, you're not that old. Up in <laughs> LA. And uh, I don't even know who preached. It wasn't John Wimber. Somebody preached. And then they said, let's just wait for a moment and let the Holy Spirit stir. And I looked around and I could see waves of power just going through like a wave. And the people would physically respond. I'm not talking about seeing something spiritual that wasn't happening. I'm talking about if you had a video, you could see the people responding in waves of glory going across them. Mm. Hallelujah. Sometimes we call it 
shock waves. You can call it a tidal wave. Uh, and in fact, when when the Holy Spirit moves in John chapter three, Jesus talking to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, who was the richest man in Jerusalem, they say he had enough money that he could personally support the entire city for three months out of his own pocket. And he was considered to be the greatest scholar of the day. Well, Jesus was teaching him about the Holy Spirit, because see, no matter how smart and how rich you are, if you don't know about the Holy Spirit, you haven't even come to first base yet. And that's what we're trying to do in our little teachings. We're trying to stir up your pure mind and get you motivated to want to get to first base and second base and learn and grow and change. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Jesus was telling the Holy Spirit, you can't see the Spirit, but you can see the wind when it blows through the trees. You can see the boughs of the trees are moving. And so when it's wind... We don't call it waves, wind waves. We call it gusts, winds gusting. Yesterday was a windy day. They said the wind was 22 miles an hour with gusts to 30 to 35 miles an hour gusts. Hallelujah. But you and I need to be comfortable with the waves of glory, with the waves of the Holy Spirit. And so when those things move on you, it touches your emotions so powerfully that you can laugh or cry or laugh and cry and laugh and cry intermittently on maybe two seconds apart. Yeah. And you say, well, in the natural, you couldn't do that because you can't, your mind can't switch channels back and forth, back and forth that fast, but your spirit can do anything that the Holy Spirit is initiating. And so we need to become a friend with our own emotions. Emotions are wonderful. That's how the Holy Spirit guides us. As many as are led by the Spirit God, through their God. emotions. They are the sons of God, Romans chapter 8 again. So you got to be a friend of your emotions. And you have to begin to be comfortable with the Holy Spirit touching you. And that's why uh, most people resist the Holy Spirit a lot because... They're afraid that their emotions will get out of control and they'll cry or they'll giggle or fall down or do something crazy. And so they resist. They say, I don't want to get all emotional here. I'm a man or I'm a strong woman. I don't want to get emotional. But the reality is your emotions are wonderful. Jesus loves your emotions. He loves you and your emotions and he blesses you through your emotions. Hallelujah. So I want to challenge you today to welcome the waves. If you welcome the waves of the Holy Spirit, visualize yourself just getting up and laying on a table and waves just blowing across wind and power and energy and glory, just waving across your body. And it's adjusting you. Each time the Holy Spirit moves, it is adjusting you in some way. Hallelujah. I love the picture of the xylophone, you know, that's just a weird flat thing and you got these little tongs and you bong 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 that's poor imitation <laughs> but the xylophone is a crazy instrument but think of that as you are the xylophone and the Holy Spirit is touching your emotions and adjusting you and perfecting you mm. or another way as a cook would say you get down to the final, like when I make a big pot of chili, I usually make 12 or 14 quarts at a time in two huge pots, and then I combine it. Hallelujah. But when you get to the very end, you taste it, and you're going, oh, I need a few drops of chili powder. I need a little bit more onion. And you taste it, and you're doing the final adjustment. And you view what the Holy Spirit does through you like you're the xylophone and he's giving you the final adjustments. He's perfecting you. He's adjusting you. So my challenge for you today is visualize yourself as that xylophone and welcome the Holy Spirit to adjust and perfect things concerning you. Fall in love with your own emotions because that's how God relates to you. Not through the mind. Well, partially through the mind, but primarily through the emotions. So, Father, 
Let your anointing be rich and full and deep on your people today and yes. let us receive the waves of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome the waves, my friend. Welcome the waves. Love you and have a marvelous day. Yeah, thank you all so much. I hope y'all are getting ready for the waves. Uh, we've been excited to be able to hear back from you all and interact with y'all, and we're so happy you're enjoying this series. Uh, please be sure to hit that notification bell right there. It'll just get you informed every time one of our videos comes out so you can keep up with the series. Make sure that you run over and catch up on our Sunday morning sermon series in case you haven't seen any of those. And until next time, we'll see you. Love you guys. Bye.